In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually create your own plaque using some of the 3D design tools within ArtCAD. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to create a new model. I'm going to do this 300 in height, 400 in width. I'm going to put the origin, which is marked by this symbol here in the center. And I'm going to select OK. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create some text. So if I select the create vector text, which is here, here you can see all of the fonts available within ArtCam. These are actually all of the fonts that are installed on my computer. So all of the fonts that are on your computer will show up within ArtCam here. So I'm going to use this engraver font here. And if I just select on the model, it gives me this cursor telling me that I can start typing. So let's type in Bloodhound. Now you can see that this is very, very small. So I'm just going to left click drag the mouse over all of the text and you can see that it becomes highlighted. And then I'm going to change to millimeters and I can change the size by clicking the arrow keys or I can just enter a size in there. So let's just bring that up. Let's say to around about there. I can also adjust the spacing of this if I wanted to like so and then select done when I'm happy with that. Just going to center that on the page there. And I'm just going to move that down like so. Now what I'm going to do is switch to the 3D view just to see this. And I'm going to show you a tool called the Shape Editor. Now this is the tool that's used within ArtCam to create basic 3D shapes. So if I select the shape editor, which is here, now you can also do this by just double clicking on the lines or the vectors. And you can see that we have this shape editor dialog box. Now you can create domes with this, you can create beveled edges with this, or you can create flat surfaces. And I'll show you the difference between each one. So if I just zoom in here on the B, and I'm going to create a dome and I'm just going to select add. There you can see it's just created this dome shape. If I undo that, create a bevel and select add. So it creates this sort of pyramid shape. I can undo that, select a flat. Now with the flat, you can't use this angle. What you need to use is the star type, which is basically the height of the flat. So if I were to enter, let's say five millimeters and select add, you can see that that's brought that up by five millimeters. Now I can undo that and let's create a dome again. Now you'll see this slider bar here. This changes the angle of the actual roundness of the dome. So if I go right to the top, which is 90, and add that, you can see it's a more rounder dome. I can undo that. Let's say I come down to about nine, maybe 10, and add that. And you can see it's a lot shallower the dome is. Now, if I were to do this as a negative and then add, you'll see that it creates a negative dome. So let's just undo that. Now I can also select add. You can see I've shown you it just adds onto the top of the zero. Now I can subtract this. So this actually takes it away from the zero. So you can see that it's, it's more of a pocket. So just for the moment, what I'm going to do is to create, let's say a 15 degree 
dome and with a start height of let's say 0.5 millimeters now this star type will basically give a 0.5 millimeter flat and then create the dome so if i add that you can see it's created a flat and then the dome on the top so what i can do is just close that for a moment Now I'll just show you what the merge high mose actually is. So let's say that I was to create a rectangle right the way through this text here, like so. And maybe let's create a copy of this. I can do that by pressing control on the keyboard and just left clicking and dragging the rectangle creates a copy. I can then transform that by pressing T on the keyboard and let's rotate this by 90 degrees like so and then I'm going to center this let's create a line at the bottom here and just trim this off I'm going to make sure that I've got auto join selected like so Now you can see that the end of this is coming over the top of the piece. So what I can do is just go to node editing by pressing N on the keyboard. Just select the two nodes here and just grab them. Press Alt on the keyboard and then I can just bring that down. Let's say like so. Now what I'm going to do is to merge these rectangles into the Bloodhound text and I want them to lie underneath the text. So if I open up the shape editor again and um, what I'm going to do with this is just create a flat and I'm going to give this a start height of let's say 0.2 and I'll just show you the difference if I were to select add. So if I zoom in on the B, you can see that it's actually added this rectangle onto the top of the text. And that's not at all what I want. So if I undo that, this time use merge high. And what this will do, it will merge the rectangles into the text so you can see if I turn off the vectors that it's created this rectangle which lies underneath the text okay so let me just undo that because I want to show you what zero and zero rest do so if I were to select zero on this rectangle it would basically cut anything that is within the rectangle so you can see that that's got rid of anything within the rectangle if I undo that and do zero rest it will do the opposite it will remove anything outside of the rectangle okay so let me undo that and I'm just going to merge both of these in like so and you can see that it's created these rectangles underneath the bloodhound now if I wanted to what I could do is to let's say add a piece of clip art to this so let's open up the relief clip art library maybe let's add a cog so let's choose let's say this cog here like so maybe let's add a few of these and merge them in so you can see I've got a few cogs so let's grab this one here like so I can make that smaller let's make this one smaller like so I 
I'm not too worried about them actually fitting and mating properly. Let's just make sure that that goes over there. Let's just have those three lights. So, when I'm happy with that, let's go to transform. Make sure that I'm on merge high, which is here, and then select paste. You can see that that's pasted all of them there. Now you can see that they're quite high. So if I were to undo that, and then select those again, go to transform, I can change the Z range. So let's bring those down to, let's say about one millimeter and then select paste. So there you can see that's added all of those cogs. Now what I can do is maybe add a texture to the back of this. Now if I select here for texture relief, this opens up the texture relief tool. And I can do this over the whole relief over a selected vector or a selected color. Now if I turn my vectors back on, you can see that I don't have a vector for the gears that I've created. So what I'm going to do is select these vectors and delete them. And I'm going to create a vector that goes around the boundary of the whole of this. And I can do that by selecting the create boundary from relief. And I'm going to just select create boundary and it will create a boundary of the relief. Now there you can see I've got my boundary for the texture. I don't want to create a texture on any of this area that I've created. So let's create a rectangle, just snap to the boundaries of the model. And I'm just going to press Control A on the keyboard and that will select all of the vectors for me. So I'm going to create a texture relief over the selected vector. Now you can use the pre-generated textures if you wish. So we have a spherical one at the moment. So if I select add, you can see it creates this spherical texture. So if I zoom in, you can see it's got all of this all of these spheres on there, which looks quite nice. Create an elliptical one and add that, like so. Do the same with cones. I can even create a weave. Now if I zoom in on this, you can see it's created this woven effect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just undo that and I'm going to make the weave larger. So let's give it about a size of 10 and select apply. And you can see it's created this weave. What I'm going to do in the next video is show you how you can do this from a file. So I'm going to use a picture to do this. So here you can see my finished piece just using the 3D design tools within ArtCam.